Okay, gang, we're going to look at some simple interest calculations. Before I get started here, remember at this point we're only looking at lump sum investments or lump sum deposits or lump sum loans. So uh, in this section we're not, uh, we don't have any annuities, so there's no monthly payments or anything of that nature. So let's take a look at some examples. Number one says find the interest on a used car loan of $5,000 at a rate 16% for a period of eight months. So basically, since there's nothing in here about money being compounded, we know that we're dealing with a simple interest uh, loan. And so all we have to do to find the interest is to multiply the principal, and the principal here is given right here is five thousand dollars and then the rate remember the rate here is sixteen percent but don't forget when you put it in a calculation you have to write it as a decimal so we would write that as 0.16 and then the time is eight months and this is where it could get a little tricky but this formula up here if you remember time has to be converted to years so if it's eight months we would convert eight months to years by just dividing it by 12, and you could reduce that to two-thirds if you wanted to. You didn't have to, but if you wanted to, you could do that. And then, so we put this information in the calculator. Here's your principal. Here's your rate. Here's your time. And then just punch a few buttons on your calculator, and you can see that the interest is $533.33. The second example here involves an investment of $10,000 into a money market account that pays a simple interest rate of 1.75% over a 39-week period. Again, here we're just looking for the interest, so there's no compounding. It actually tells us here it's a simple interest rate, so what we're going to look for is the interest. And again, we just use the principal times rate times time. Principal is $10,000. The rate, if we put it in decimal, would be 0 0.0175. And since there's 52 weeks in a year, we would convert 39 weeks to years by just dividing 39 by 52, which is 0.75. Now, if this had been some odd numbered week like 37, I would have just put 37 over 52 in here instead of 0.75 to avoid uh, losing accuracy. But since 39 over 52 is exactly 0.75, I can go ahead and put 0.75 in this spot here. So you take 10,000 times 0.0175 times 0.75, that's your principal times rate times time, and you get that the interest on this uh, money market account is $131.25. On that a uh, previous example up there, the one where we, the one I just did, um, if we'd wanted to know the amount owed, like if you had cashed out that investment, then the amount owed to you would have been not just the interest, but it would have been the principal plus the interest. So the amount that you would be paid if you cashed out that money market account would be 10,000 plus 131.25, which is 10,000 plus uh, $10,131.25. So all you have to do to get the amount is just add your principal plus your interest. Now, that actually allows me to develop another formula. Uh, since amount is principal plus interest, and interest is PRT, then we can say that amount is principal plus PRT. And then if you factor the P out, you get this. Now this formula is not a great revelation, but, but it does allow you to calculate the amount without actually knowing what the interest is. So let's return to our car loan that we did, the very first problem. Instead of asking for the interest, suppose we had asked for the amount that we would have to pay. Well, the amount we would have to pay at the end of that, we could actually just use this formula, principal times 1 plus RT. And then all we have to do is put in the principal, $5,000, and then make sure you put 1 plus RT in parentheses here. See the parentheses? And then on the inside, you have 1 plus the rate in decimal, 0.16, and 
and the time, which is two-thirds of a year. And if you put everything in this calculator exactly the way I have it here, make sure you put parentheses around the entire sum here, um, you'll get um, 5,533.33, which is actually what you would have gotten had you taken the 5,000 and added the 5,33.33. Um, here's another example. It says find the amount due on a loan of $600 at 15.75% interest after 21 months. Well, again here, the principal is 600, the rate in decimals 0.1575, and the time in years is 21 twelfths of a year, which is 1.75 years. So if you just want the amount, you can go to this formula, principal times 1 plus RT, and what we can do there is put in the 600 for principal and then again put parentheses around the outside of this and then on the inside we have 1 plus 0.1575 which is the rate times the time 1.75 and then just plug it into your calculator and you get 765.38 you could easily get the interest from this all you'd have to do is subtract the $600 that you invested and then um, subtract it from 765.38 and you could easily get your interest. So these formulas sort of work in tandem, these two formulas that we've talked about so far. So the I equal PRT and the A equal P times 1 plus RT, these formulas work together easily with one another. Now we could reverse our thinking here. Instead of looking for the amount, we could say how much would you need to invest so you could say how much would you need to invest in order to have a balance or an amount. So in that case, um, here's what we would do. Um, you could do it a couple of different ways, but let's go back to this formula, A equal P times 1 plus RT. Um, one thing you could do is you could just plug in all the information. You could plug in the amount, $3,000. You could plug in the rate, which is 0 0.06, and the time which is 15 twelfths of a year or 1.25 years. And then um, you could actually simplify all of this. If you multiply this together and add 1, you get 1.075. And then if you divide 1.075 into 3,000, you get 2790.70. Another way to do that is simply take this formula here and solve it for a formula for P. All you have to do is divide both sides by 1 plus RT. So if you do that, you get this formula for P, and then you can just plug the information in, and you don't have to do any uh, algebra. You just plug the information in your calculator, 3,000 over 1 plus 0 0.06 times 1.25. Again, you got to have parentheses on the outside for this to work out the correct way. And so basically, you're going to get the same thing, 3,000 over 1.075, which is 2790.70. So you would have to invest $2,790.70 at this rate in this time period in order for it to grow to $3,000. Okay, now let's look at this problem. I'll let you read it, but basically what we're looking for is we're going to be solving for the rate. So what we're going to do is um, we want to know the annual interest rate. We have a 33-day T-bill that matures to $1,000 and sells for $996.16. We're going to use 360 days for a year um, in this particular example. Now, if I go to this formula, A equal P times 1 plus RT, then I know the amount that I want it to grow to is $1,000. I know that my principal is 996.16. I know that my time is 33 out of 360. And then, um, you know, I have 1 plus RT in here. So it's 1 plus R times 33 over 360. And I'm trying to solve for R. If you distribute the 996.16 here, you get 996.16 times 1. And then 996.16 times 33 over 360R. Okay, well then, um, what you could do is subtract this 996.16 from 1,000, and you get 384 equals all of this times R. 
So then just take 384 and divide it by all of this, and it will give you R. And R is 0 0.042 or 4.2 percent. You can view this one. This is just another way. You can also solve this with the I equal PRT formula where you calculate the interest first, which is $3.84, and then you can just plug it into I equal PRT. And basically, you'll notice I end up with the same result, you know, for either way I solve it. So the answer is 4.2%. I'll finish up by working two or three of these problems here. Uh, the first one is pretty straightforward. You borrow $3,000, 14% simple interest for 10 months. How much will you owe in 10 months? So we can use A equal P times 1 plus RT. The principal is 3000 The rate is 0.14. The time in years is 10 twelfths. So P times 1 plus RT. Put that in your calculator. You get $3,350. And if for some reason you wanted the interest, you just subtract 3000 from this, and you get the interest is $350. This one says a loan of $2,500 was repaid at the end of 39 weeks with a check of $281250. What annual rate of interest was charged? Okay, so what I decided to do here was use I equal PRT. I can easily find the interest here by just subtracting $2,500 from the amount that was paid back. So if I subtract that, I get three twelve fifty. So that's the interest. I know the principal is twenty five hundred, so I'll put that for P. R is the unknown, and T is thirty nine out of fifty two, which is 0.75. So to solve for R, I just take three twelve fifty and divide it by twenty five hundred times 0 0.75, and I get sixteen point six seven percent. Number three, you can pause the video and read that one. It's done just like number one. Number four, we have an investor wants to earn an annual interest rate of 10.76% on the 26-week treasury bill with a maturity value of $5,000. How much should the investor pay for the bill? I'm going to use this formula because we're looking for principal. So the principal should equal the amount, which is $5,000, divided by 1 plus RT. R is 0 0.1076, T is half a year, 0.5 years, because 26 weeks is, is 0.5 years, or one half a year, and so when you plug this into the calculator, you get 47, 44, 73. Okay, I'm going to finish on this problem, and then you can do the last one on your own. Um, this one is a little bit tricky, because you're going to buy 100 shares at 29.52 a share, but you have to pay a transaction fee of 1% of the total transaction. So basically, the amount that you, the principal that you invest is 100 times $29.52, which is $2,952. But you've got to pay a 1% fee on top of that, so that's going to add up to $2,981.52. But here's the catch. When you sell your shares, you're going to sell 100 shares at $37.85. That's going to give you $3,785, but you have to pay out of that 1%. So you're going to lose 1% of that because you're going to pay that to your broker. So you're only going to gain $37.47.15. And so now the difference between the amount you invested and the amount you gained is actually going to be your interest. So now that you have the interest, you can determine the rate using I equal PRT. Here's your interest, here's your principal, here's your time, 9 twelfths of a year is 0.75. So then you divide 765.63 by the product of these two numbers and you get 0.3424 and when you convert that to percent, it's 34.24%. And then again, just read the last one on your own. Basically, anytime you want to know how long it will take something to double, if you want to know, if you want the principal to double, just let the amount be twice the principal, and then you can divide both sides by P, and it'll cancel out the P's. And then you get this formula, and then you can solve for T. And you can see I got 20.83 years. And that's the end.